I need your permission on footage to be like to part. Me? What? To use me in my face? Yeah. You're good. <laughs> okay. So, general thoughts on the subject. Oh. Uh, like long term. Not sleeping? Yeah, long term sleep deprivation. It causes you to go insane. Longest you've ever been awake. Four days. I just couldn't sleep, so I didn't. Do you remember the night that we were texting when, like, there were... I was at a party where two people were, like... And... Yeah. That was a very interesting night. <laughs> I remember at, like... 1 a.m. you were talking about how, like, you had these nightmares occasionally that just kept you from sleeping. I mean, it's, I guess it's the classic nightmare where something's trying to eat you, or something goes wrong and the world is ending, or I don't know, it kind of depends. It's just something that relatively freaks me out, and I just can't go back to sleep, so I just get up and do something. Yeah, I see how that could, like, keep you from sleeping. After all, um, if you don't want to dream... You don't sleep. <laughs> and really, the horrible thing about it is that innocent, well-meaning, beautiful people who try to stop this cycle of horrible, like, late-night torture, and it is torture late at night when you can't sleep but you want so desperately to, these people go to the companies for help, companies that manufacture insomnia drugs, and they get only manipulation, and by that point, you're addicted. You have a greater need for something that is less and less effective the more you do it. Like, for example, Halcyon is the drug that's like the Prozac of insomnia medication, right? Tons of studies showing that it causes rebound insomnia, and like, not even just that. More psychological disturbances, hallucinations in some cases, memory loss, trouble with recall, sustained attention difficulties, uh, paranoia, anxiety, all of that. And these drug companies make sure that you don't know about any other forms of treatment. It's simply atrocious. Well, the last two nights in a row, I got plenty of sleep, but the four days previous to that, I went a consistent 48 hours without sleeping, so uh, I'm pretty out of it right now. The moral of this story is, kids, you don't just recover from that kind of sleep deprivation. After one night of good sleep, like if I have schoolwork and I'm exhausted, it's just like, <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't know. We'll see how I do. Badly. If I'm pissed off at myself. And school is like, really important. You can't afford to sleep through it. You begin to wonder if a few extra measly little hours awake are really worth all this like slog during the daytime. But then you go, oh wait, insomnia isn't rational anyway. It's just hard because the sleep-deprived mind is so much more genuinely unique and interesting. It's like having a ball and chain clamped onto your leg for a long time, you know? Like, you get so used to it that you can't imagine moving without it. That's why Jack Kerouac wrote On the Road in like three days, just huffing speed and writing nonstop. I mean... That's just the state in, of mind in which strange and new thoughts can occur. Or at the very least, the state that strange and new thoughts put you in, as opposed to, like, I don't know, schoolwork. It's just a catch-22.